Hey, people. Look at me, I ain't got no hair Kids laid in under my square So listen to my story, it's not a fable Oh God, there was a you on the table I'm all part of you to be I'm still on me and pass the son of a gun Now straight ahead to you, baby Talk that, come straight to hell with me Take me out, I'm pretty and fast I'll tell all that cause it's a fact What's up? <laughs> that was a great video, man. That was killer, nice. man. Yeah, I liked it. So here the fuck we are, man. A neighbor nation. And well, happy birthday, Splatterhead. Cheers, man. It's actually it's tomorrow, but uh How the hell is he not fucking fifty like us? I, I know. know. We celebrated <laughs> Marty after birthday, but whatever, man. Yeah. You should Cheers. be 50. What are you drinking there, the Tem? I am drinking a friend of the show. Uh, angry angry Dad. dads. Yeah, we had him on when we were at Raceway Park for Oktoberfest last year. This is I'm the only fucking beer everything. He makes. Huh? He, there we go. Only beer he makes, and you know what? It's all he needs to make. He it's promotes a, the sh he promotes the shit out of that beer, man. It's yeah. a you know what? It's more of a brand, yeah, than a, than a brew. Yeah, it, it's so. a nice amber ale. It's all he needs. I think it's brewed by Beach House, actually. Really? Yeah, Point Pleasant, I think. I think it's it brewed by them. Well, it does say 5.5 alcohols and Angry Dad, angrily brewed. And uh, I've been drinking for a while. So well, fucked up. up. Once Mikey came in, I got to adjust the fucking camera again. It doesn't fit me and Groby. Beach House Brewery. Yeah, Point Pleasant. Yeah, that's it. Beach House Brewery. Yeah, Belmar. Yeah, Point Pleasant, whatever. So did, yeah. does he lease their their brew system or? Do no, he probably just gave them a recipe and they make it for him. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, he he's he's more about uh, like having a brand than like and yeah. pushing it out there and which is cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah you should have seen him at at a Oktoberfest. He had this uh this van that pulled up, said "Angry Dad" all over. It was like a food truck. Then he had just like it was him and a bunch of gorgeous women. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Then he came over and gave us a six strong. pack, and we interviewed him. Yeah, strong business model. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what are you drinking, Groby? I'm drinking a uh, a splatterhead cream ale. <gasps> I want that. Yeah, and it's pretty fucking mm. good. I'm gonna put it up against the other cream ale I have. There you go. So, well, Mikey, what do you have? So my friend, I uh, I recently returned from uh, from sunny Southern California, and I picked up uh, a four banger. This is Abnormal Brewing out of San Diego, nice. California. And nice. This one is, 
Yeah, they they do pretty good. This thing is called Hazy Dream, Hazy Dreams, Hazy Style IPA. It's got a little dream catcher emblem on it, and it comes in at six point nine alcohols. Let's see, let's see what it looks like. I don't know what this is. He didn't tell me. So <laughs> that's like that's like a, a three point eight banger. Oh, it's okay. A, it's like a Jenny, man. Oh, okay. I think it tastes kind of like a Jenny too. It's yeah, like, that's what I was Jenny thinking. Cream yeah. is yeah. pretty good, man. Like, yeah. yeah, I like that stuff. We used to load up the back seat with fucking beer balls, man, because they were like fucking eighteen dollars. Yeah, fucking load them up. Fuck, drive around all night. All right, so you got a good little color, good little mm. thing, right there. Looks delicious. Oh yeah, that's good. You know, I, I I was reluctant to come around to the whole hazy hazy IPA thing, but dude, that shit's fuck like. You know, double dry hop is fucking delicious, man. Like, oh yeah, yeah. I just took it in stride. The whole, you know, you know what else? Things is, getting hazy and everything. It's like ah, whatever. So what I'm what I'm drinking Not heads. is uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking a beer from what's this brewery from? They're from uh, what Milwaukee, 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 uh, which is in uh, Wisconsin, where they make cheese. Yeah, and. Uh, it's pretty fucking banging. It's uh, I think it's pretty low ABV, but this one here is. Uh, I think it's like four. Yeah, uh, it's an old brewery, and this is uh, they call this the the shag champagna of beers. Oh, this is the the Miller High Life here on the label. I like it. It's the uh, it's the Miller High Life, and. Uh, Oh, he's not in the tool shed. I know. What the hell? No. He upgraded. Now, now look. Now that he's here, we can yeah. see both yeah. of me and you just everybody's, fine. Everybody's visible. Yeah. Clutch. You came so I have. Clutch. Yeah, I have the. Uh, I have yeah, the what? Miller High Life, which is a very tasty. Right. I'm enjoying this. I think it's a tasty beverage. I can you guys hear me here? I can't hear myself. No, I, I couldn't. Hear no, we, we can't, can't hear, hear you. you. No, we can't no. hear you. Can you hear me say "fuck you"? We cannot hear no, you. No, we can't hear you. you say fuck you. Did you just say fuck you? Because I didn't hear that. No. <laughs> so what's hey, going on? Uh, what I miss? What I miss? You miss what are we drinking? What are you drinking? You go. Yeah. Sorry, I had to yell at the kid. Go away. I'm apparently I'm swearing with headphones. <laughs> You're on. supposed I can't to hear myself. No. Yeah, put your headphones you on. Put a dollar in the jar, Daddy. Right. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, we we I'll can't right hear back. you either, but you can hear us. Yeah. So, all right. So we don't know what we don't know what Boogie's drinking. So what the hell's going on, way. man? We no, got. I'm, I'm about opening another one. You can't see this. Right. We got a lot of shit going on though. We got good Green stuff cream. coming up. Yeah, we got a lot of shit coming up, man. Yeah, we got a uh, uh, Howard. Howard wants to come on the show next week uh, to yeah, talk cool. about the uh, Spring Fest. So. Nice. We got any brewers from there? Not yet. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're working on it. So and We'll be broadcasting from Lanoka Harbor next weekend. Lanoka Harbor. Is that next weekend? I'll be right back. The 17th, man. Holy shit. All right. Mid-April. I thought it was in May. Shit. May 17th to St. Patrick's Day. What? Oh, no. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> You're fired, man. <laughs> May 17th to St. Patrick's Day. What the hell? Uh, Jimbo! Was... Something happened on May 17th. I don't know what it is. Jimbo's here. Jimbo's drinking a Sierra Nevada hazy. Cheers, guys. Hazy Cheers. Little thing. Yeah. Jimbo, I got the Miller High Life. It's, uh, beer. Does it's it, from did, Milwaukee. Oh, it's the Champagne of beers. Does it? Does the can have Sweet Lady alcohol right there on the label too? I don't think it does. Because you know how the 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 bottles have the Lady in the Moon. Like I'm gonna. Yeah, I don't beer. see. Oh, she's yeah, she's up. To, you can barely see her though. Or that's yeah, just a scuff on the can. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I got know. a new one here. I got a see ice cream. Remember, when I was a kid, there was a train wreck. In Berkshire Valley. And one of the cars that flipped over was a refrigerated box car full of eight packs of High Life. <laughs> so, needless to say, 
my basement, because my dad was a fireman, was filled ceiling to floor with cases of eight packs. Like all the other firemen in the township. <laughs> nice. Restore. So. Oh, besides that, uh, I was drinking the High Life. He's drinking one of the cream ales that I made. Um, and we're also drinking a little bit of marijuana <coughs> with some <laughs> with some it. with some hash. Hmm. And uh, hmm. you drink you're drinking that. Like that uh, like <laughs> Well the, the no, no, no. The boogie had no, 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 we were smoking it and then uh I had a, a couple of uh vodkas <laughs> earlier. Mm, vodkas. So it's gonna be a fun night, man. Yeah. Talk more about that cream ale. I want to hear more about it. I love cream ales. This? Yeah. It's like Genesee, man. Yeah, Fuck that's yeah. what I, Bang it down. That's what I was shooting for. He should for. sell it in beer balls. Yeah. I wrote, a, I wrote an entire album by drinking a case of Genesee cream ale that came in a wooden case. Yes. Nice. You should sell it in beer balls. For, for which I'm band? I'm a Chuck's cream uh, balls. Mike Blanks and the Stabs. You know what? Why can't we sell craft beers in fucking beer balls? I think you can. You could say, come get my creamy balls. <laughs> fucking do it. We got to beat the hipsters or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. hey, we, if you're a hipster and you're listening, you uh, take yeah. your top knot, and cover your ears. You need yeah. shit. It was our idea. We'll beat your fucking knot head ass. That's right. You synced it here first. Yeah. You and your fucking kale. You fucking kale. <laughs> what the, what the fuck One more time. Right you and your fucking kale. Okay. <laughs> What the fuck is I, I eat kale all the time. <laughs> yeah, I eat kale too, man. <laughs> no, I'm going to do I, this one next. I, okay. I've, been, I've been pounding them today. I'm going to tell you what I'm drinking now. I got Ice Dreams Peach. You probably can't make it out. What is it? Fried ice cream? Uh, ice Dreams Peach. Okay. So it's a, Is Ice Dreams a brewery? That's what I'm about to find out here. It says a drive in delight. It's five alcohols. Drive into the light. <laughs> it's Let's a driving like delight. A it's five. Yes, up like a douche. It says pizza the boy. The night. Like right there, the bottom. That's probably the brewery. Oh, pizza yeah. boy is out yeah. like um, like Broadheadsville, Pennsylvania. Effort, yeah, it's somewhere around here. There's a uh, Noah PA because uh, Bolero Snort's known for like crazy fucking beers, like cakes and shit in their beers like all kinds of nutty shit so i'm like well if i'm gonna go there i'm gonna go fucking like i'm gonna either like go big and fucking fail or go big and like go have them go whoa fuck fuck you there's asshole. no in between with us it either it right. sucks or it's the best thing you ever had. so so i'm talking about <laughs> so I'm, so, I, so I'm talking about. I, I'm I'm going over my my theory with Laura, and the next day she comes up with a list of like crazy fucking beer ideas, mm -hmm. and I I agreed with every one of them. So I'm like, we got to do like, we got to do like one gallon batches like this weekend of like. Like trials, pilot matches. Her, yeah, like her concept of these fucking beers, but they're they're fucking wild and out of out of uh, out of uh, like out of the world fucking insane ideas for beers. So Coca Cola already beat you to peeps. So there's that. Yeah. No, yeah. No, we're not. We're not. Yeah. No, we're somebody, not. somebody made the peeps. Well, beer no. Here's the ago. deal. They're also going to be beers that, like, if you looked at it, you'd go. Oh, I want to drink that. Um, but <laughs> but I'm also gonna have a beer that looks like vomit, like a cup but but like this is crazy. But I but I definitely like the flavor, like this fucking thing that I'm looking I, I, at. I, I personally like the, the the Creole concept thing he threw at me. Yeah, no, I have a, I have yes. a, I have a, I have a Nolan's uh, concept going. Mm. So all right. You know what I like well, I, I can. I, you know what I can. You know what I can tell you the themes of the beers, sort the theme ingredients without telling you what type of beer they're going into. I'm just saying. I know that Laura likes really bitter stuff, so I'm wondering what ideas she gave you. Um. Well, one of them does include bitter melon. So okay. Hmm. But yeah, but, man, that place was closed, and I don't buy. Yeah, that's all right. 
So, but what I can do is I, I can't tell you, um, I can't tell you, uh, so I won't tell you what, what I'm doing for the, for the, the competition. Yeah. The, All right. Like, actually, you're not going to give away the, the, the secret recipe. But, you're, but, I, but I'll, but I'll, but I'll throw a couple of ideas at you that came like collaborations, like. Mostly from Laura, and then like one that I really stuck head fast to that I that I came up with. So one is going to be, uh, and Mikey, you're going to know a lot of these flavors from like your childhood. So one is going to be like a uh, mango chili. Oh yeah! Right? Oh yeah! Love right? That shit. Love it. Um, so if you think of like a manganata or. Um, you know, uh, chamoy, something like like mm -hmm. in that vein, right? Yeah, just um, yeah. 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 So, so, so that's founders did one called Mango Magnifico, but it's way too fucking sweet, dude. Right? Yeah, and, and I, I you know, yeah avoid that. Right? Yeah, but if you can make if you can replicate that, oh, I'll drink all of them. Right. Right. And then another one is is sort of like a, a play on a Mexican lager. But it's an ale because I don't have time to lager a beer, even not only for sampling, but also from the time that I brew to the time that the beer has to be entered to the competition. There's no time to lager, but I have like a, a familiar flavor profile to a Mexican lager. Oh. Um, and that's also going to include some tamarind and... Uh, a mm -hmm, mm -hmm. little bit of chili in there as well. So, you know, very, mm -hmm. very heavy, like Chicano mm -hmm. fucking mm -hmm. California profile to that. Oh. And, uh, yeah. uh oh. Uh oh. I'm getting called out now. No, uh, did I, someone say I, Mexican? I'm Jews Jews here. <laughs> um, Jews. And then, so, so here's my big one, right? Is, um, is, uh, so, you know, everybody does coffee, beers, and all that shit, but I'm, I'm like, throwing that out the fucking, like, okay, cool, but I can play with that, and, uh, fucking chicory beignet. That's the one I want. Like. Chicory That's and the, beignet, that, that, right? Because those are two beignets. shits that go together. Who doesn't love beignets? Huh. Yeah. My so, does. Right actually, <laughs> damn right. Somebody <laughs> and, and I'm not like whatever beer I brew, and I'm not telling you what what kind of beer it's going into, but I'm not fucking around. There's beignets going into this beer. It's not going to be, yeah. It's not going to be. Let's try to mimic the flavor. There's a there's a CIA trained fucking chef a block away, Whoa. in his house, fucking whipping up beignets for me Bye, right yeah. now. For this beer, and uh, oh, man, I need a bag to take home. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. I was like, "You sell some beignets this way?" Yeah, that's awesome. So, that's and uh, there's another one too, but I can't fucking for the life of me remember which ones I said and which ones I didn't right now. So, the tamarindo with some some chili and and yeah, some fresh mango could be. That oh that, yeah that, yeah that yeah that depending on what I, it goes in I am right? not opposed depending, to that at all <laughs> depending on the beer too and yeah, I you and gotta I, find I, the I right can't, base yeah. no I have it I just can't tell it to you right no, now no yeah don't because, don't give away the secret sauce don't do um it. and I, so I think like like those right there and then I there is another one but I'll I'll keep that I'm pretending that I'm keeping it under wraps but. <laughs> I'm I'm actually stoned and drunk and I can't remember what <laughs> if I just gave away the <laughs> yeah. see what happens when they're in the same room with me. But I'm keeping that under wraps. Yeah. <laughs> Kobe shows up with the fucking hash and it all goes to hell. <laughs> like, he's like, Here's out. You rub it the hash on it, then you sprinkle then you sprinkle the what's the fuck the dust Look, called? Let's all pretend Keep we can't let's all pretend we can't hear Rodney. <laughs> That's all right. I haven't said anything anyway. I know. I know. I, what are you I drinking? I see your mouth moving, but yeah. Well, I had. To yeah. What are you, you drink? What's Rodney what drinking? drinking? I mean, Boogie. Yeah. Shh. Yeah. Whatever. So what are you drinking anyway, Boogie? Dad. I. I all right. I got to take the headphones off because I, I can't. I can't. I'm not used to it. It's, I'm so out of use with headphones, and I'm using you my. Can't drink headphones. with headphones on. 
That's cool, man. No. But I'll tell you what, it's going to be really funny because when you take them off, I've you're going to realize this little kid headphones. You're going to realize that you can like, hear us. Oh, oh, so that's cool. We're all going to be saying stuff to you. You're well, not going to hear nothing. I'm yeah. just going to go no headphones here. We're going to be anyway. like tickle. Like I'm tickling uh, Boogie's balls right now. He has no idea. He's he's like, yeah, this is cool. No headphones. They're not comfortable. But he's you know, liking the ball tickling though. Yeah. Yeah. Look, he froze. He froze. Oh, there no, he it goes. doesn't <laughs> work without headphones. What? <laughs> Wait, he has a microphone. <laughs> say, what? Boogie, what are you? I drinking? can't hear you. Oh well, yeah, yeah, no shit, because you don't have the headphones yeah. on. You, you goddamn yeah. monster. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Right? You See how that works? You need headphones to hear us. Now, what are you drinking well, for Christ's sake? Mr. Christ Boogie, face? what we, are you drinking? We've already established you have like some sort of like third world this, See, this is great. Ooh. Like usually like. What is this? We get, like, usually Just like, shut I'm, up. like we, we get the white trash into the room. But I started off with a Miller High Life. So what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I, can't I mean, where do you go from there? Yeah, well. You, I thought down No place to there. go but up. No place to go but up. Since anyway, seltzer I'm beers. drinking. No, these are actually ciders. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is because, uh, yeah, the beers just aren't laying right with me lately. Man. I, I got to keep something with alcohol in me. Beer's not beer's not working so good. So I'm back on the ciders. This is the right. Down East Unfiltered Craft Cider. Right now I'm drinking the pear. Is that from and, Maine? Uh, it's pretty um, I would think with that this? down east talk. <laughs> oh, look! Uh, I don't know where it's in there. this. Look here, Chewy. Boston the secret ingredient is, is Mrs. Dash. Dash. <laughs> Always was that or it's that Hams. or old day. <laughs> <That> <laughs> <or> old day. <laughs> ben Gang. <laughs> You're not, no, you're not off here. But, um, this is uh, the it's the, the Down East Cider House is in Boston, Massachusetts. Boston, Mass. Bean right. Town. Boston, Boston, Mass. Boston. But uh, yeah, this this I got the the sampler and it's got uh, well, this is the pear. This is five point three of the alcohols. It's got pear, the original blend, which I guess is just you know like an apple cider. And then a, a blackberry, which I think I'm going to try next. Nice. But, yeah, this is pretty tasty. Nice. nice and, you know, pink, of course. Pinky with, up. You know, yeah. Cool. I'd be mixing all of them with a bottle absolute. Well, I'm, we, we I'm drinking that. a uh, – I'm drinking from Equilibrium, Ooh. the harvester of Simcoe. Hmm. Uh, which uh what is groby that? groby shut up with and is it, it is, is it, uh it, it, yeah well, i got the slayer one it's, the last time so i got this one it's 8.8 .8 alcohols hey, and i've been trying to track these beers down which is fucked up because the brewery is literally uh, like 20 minutes yeah, from my house like so i, I should just be able to go over there but i'm busy and shit um and it's easier, like their beers are more widely distributed in Jersey than they are in New York. So this is a uh, 8.8 alcohols. It's a double IPA. And it's got, you know, uh, it's themed after one of the lesser Metallica records, you know, but it's cool. I'll drink it. Not one of the good and, ones, like the the gas station one or whatever the fuck. Right, was. right, yeah, 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 the gas station oh, one. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't like the Slayer one. But here you After go, rain and blood, and <laughs> and it is being consumed out of a brewskits glass, which is a uh, brew for you and Fido too. They, they, it's a company that they don't make beer, but they reach out to local breweries and they oh, use grain. their spent grains to make dog biscuits. So yeah. Oh, that yeah. place is cool. Yeah. yeah. Which uh Laura's been making fucking like she's been making so much banging shit out of the beers that we make together. Like mm -hmm. she's taking the spent grains and doing like 
biscuits for the dog, yeah, crackers for it. us, it bread. It. It's it's insane. Well, yeah, you can mill it and make flour. <laughs> right? Yeah. At the beginning of the pandemic. Me and, and Chuck were given like the grain when we were doing it at my house. I would give it to my daughter, and she was making dog biscuits. So I go over and hang out with the hillbillies on Wednesday, and I brought a big bag of them <laughs> to give those guys their, for their dogs. And they're like, oh, dog. I was like, yeah. I go, but you can eat them. And, I, and they're like, really? I was, and they're like, these are pretty good. What are these? I go, oh, they're like cheese and bacon. <laughs> and they're like, these are pretty good. Motherfuckers ate all of them. <laughs> they didn't they bring out any for the dogs. They ate all the dog biscuits. I'm so, 100% we, sure my little brother did that at like a 4th of July thing when we were kids. He thought they were like little, little, little Girl Scout cookies or some shit. Motherfuckers eating little dog biscuits. Uh, he's never been the same since. He's retarded. You guys talked to him before. I've I've <laughs> met him in person. I thought he was he's touched. I, th I knew he was tarted the minute we met. But. He lives a charmed <laughs> life. <laughs> so and I still haven't. I those beers have still not materialized on my porch. So I, I've decided I hate working. So maybe I'll show up at his doorstep one. We gave him yeah. three addresses. No, I know. I, I no, so yeah, I, I gave him one. Oh, and then said when he passing it. Uh, but yeah, he's he's been closed the last two weeks. Uh, doing uh construction and stuff. He he got like a a bobcat and some crap. He was like ripping out because he had a sinkhole in his parking lot. Oh. Mm hmm. So maybe we should go there when he opens. Yeah, yeah. But so, no, no, they're, they're shit. Down. I would have went down and worked for him. Yeah, no, they're coming. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. Uh, has to, gonna it be, has to be a lot easier to climb it up and down ladders all fucking day. Dark and stormy. I think. I think this one of the stouts and then uh, the braggot. I believe is what's coming your way, or it might nice. be Ryan Hart. Dark and stormy. Nice. I'll take and a braggot. Yeah, so he's got a braggot, and then the, the Ryan Hart is like a rye, a rye barrel aged Scotch style ale, and then the Dark and Stormy it's like a like a strong dark ale with ginger and aged in a rum barrel, so it tastes like uh, like a Dark and Stormy cocktail. All right, yeah, nice. I want that. I, want I like that Dark and Stormy. Oh, dude, nice. now. So, good, bro. And it, oh, there's a little bit of lime in there too. So we we do have a guest coming on tonight, yeah, and. Nice. Uh, we're pretty stoked about that because uh, some of us were just like in awe, little kids when uh, this band came out. And some of us were yes, some of was. us were already grown men. I guess yeah. <laughs> Mikey was. But a little I think kid I think I Rod, think Rodney he ain't even fucking fifty years old yet. He looks at me. Some of us are little kids. It looks but at I me. Think, I'm like. But I, think, <laughs> uh, but I but I think I think at Girl. the end of the day when the when the band came out it had, it probably had the same effect on all of us in certain aspects but uh, before we bring our guest on uh, I think Tim has a drunk news story line I could do that but I got to tell you one thing before I do drunk news now are you okay. drinking another one of those sangria beers I got another uh, Radler, breakfast bro. beer. <laughs> I was gonna drink. I bought it for Chuck so I could drink it for his birthday, but it's my third one, a half hour into the show. But it was rumored that Mike Blank was the drummer for this band coming up. Or okay, and well, we just we just went with it. He's like, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, yeah just roll band. with it. Yeah, exactly. It was yeah. rumored that I was he who cannot be named from the dwarves. Yeah, just yeah. roll with it. Yeah, yeah exactly. take Why that. Not? Yeah, if it right, helps. Listen. I'm going to leave the studio and come They're back. They're the second greatest band in the world, you know. Yeah, after the Meat Man. Next to the Meat Man. <laughs> I'm going to leave the studio and come back and do the drug news story. How long is this going to take you? I'm, Jesus. Uh, I'm I going to reload. I'll be right back. It'll be a This is a professional you know, thing we have seconds. going on here. <laughs> Two seconds. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. See, now when you guys leave, it screws me yeah, and Yeah, we're all fucked up. We're, we yeah, have to hug each other now. Microphone and part of Chuck's Fit. Now we can see yeah. the side of, side of Groby's Grill. Right. So, but, you know, it's, <laughs> it's all going to be worth it in the end because we're funny as fuck. It's true. It's true. And, you, and you're super funny high. You say like a lot when you're high. <laughs> so, like, and then, like. Dude, I say like a lot all the time. It's still, yeah, like. Well, I mean, it's a. It's a, it's a California nature. thing. Yeah, it's like, where you're I, from. I, but <laughs> yeah, I don't think I ever said like that many times in a sentence when you're describing your beers. Right. You're like, like we're gonna like put like 
the stuff. Dude, <laughs> like, when, I, oh, when I used nice. to when I used to do this pod when I used to do the football podcast and I had to edit it out for mm-hmm. content because the guys it's going too long. Our network didn't like the um they they wanted us to be clean. Oh, I. Uh, <laughs> But seriously, I'm the only one that obeyed the rules. All right, all right. I, I'm Talking just I, the wrong tree. All right, here we go. Look at Tim is you, da, da, da. you need music like the <laughs> you, you need like fucking like the storm field fucking theme song or something. <laughs> hey, I got I at least got this behind me here. Like, <laughs> check it out. Pretty sweet. Drunk news. All right. Drunk man arrested for banging on doors, windows of Port Charlotte home. Oh my God! You should see this guy. He's got one of those uh, neck beards, and like uh, Sammy, uh, what's his name? Uh, Sammy Hagar hair. <laughs> Freaking beautiful, man. But anyway, a North uh, Northport man was arrested after banging on the doors and windows of a Port Charlotte family's home. The Charlotte County Sheriff's Office and Bradley Davidson was arrested after the incident early Thursday morning. The home was located on Eisenhower Drive. Charlotte County deputies found Davison standing on the front porch of the home when they arrived on the scene. CCSO said he was noticeably intoxicated and smelled of alcohol. The husband of the woman who called 911 said he found Davison wandering around their property while he was getting ready for work. Oh, whoa. According to CCSO, Davison told the husband that he was lost and he thought he was in North Port. The couple told deputies that Davidson was asked to leave after they told him in Port Charlotte. Deputies said he came back after a while and started looking in the family's windows. Oh, sounds like a creep. Davidson started screaming and swearing while outside their door and would not leave, according to the Charlotte County deputies. He also started banging on the doors and windows at the home. The couple feared Davidson, so they grabbed a baseball bat in case he got into the home and called 911. <laughs> there you go. Nice. I'll bring up a picture of this guy later, but we should get our guest on the show now. We should get our guest on. Boogie Buzzard actually, yeah. like, you know, initiated this contact with our and guest. And now there's just a vacant chair there. And now he there's just a and vacant like, oh, chair. Go. There we He's go. Like, well, maybe, there he maybe is. Maybe he got some bad blood or some dirt or something. Rodney, please announce. He can't Tim hear us. Reading some stupid news story. Please announce our next guest. Stupid news story you found. Oh, me? Why me? You're the host. I'm just like some lackey who helped find right. awesome you guests. Up. Right. And now I'm, anyway. I'm telling you to introduce our next yeah. guest. You are our Gary the Retard. <laughs> our, let it be known that you use the word lackey, not us. Yeah. yeah. Not that I disagree. <laughs> or anyway, our guest this evening is... None other than one of the four beautiful young ladies that started the group known as Cycle Sluts from Hell out of New York City. The one and only Miss Queen Vixen from the Cycle Sluts from Hell. And how how can you not love a band that has a song called I Wish You Were, especially for this show? I would like to discuss neckbeards first and foremost. Yeah. All right. <laughs> because I have this theory that everybody, everybody terrible has a neckbeard. Like that guy that just um, did all the, the uh, Asian massage parlor murders, neckbeard. Definitely neckbeard. Yeah. yeah. Crazy, culty people always have neckbeards. And it, it does, doesn't, yeah. get, doesn't get disgusting. Rednecks? Enough. Mom's <laughs> See, basement. Um, the uh, yeah, no villains. Yeah. The Amish. Yeah, I mean, the <laughs> well, that's are pretty peaceful. But did the Amish get a bow? The Amish no, 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 don't no, have no, the no, the Amish don't get a break. The Amish don't get a break. They don't get a break. Stories out in Lancaster. Different. They're pretty peaceful, but they adopt kids at like eight years old, and then like make them drop out in of school in eighth grade. Like, and it's basically like a slave trade. I'm drunk, but I'm making I'm my like, own. Like, you're uh, not really making a positive case for them, dude. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. It's a neck beard oh, thing. I'm, I'm not counting. I'm not counting the Amish in there because they seem like really nice people. But I swear to God, every time someone goes, they, got, up, they have a neck beard. 
There's a lot no, of weird you're right. You're right. Absolutely you know, a right. lot of these like young like like shoot 'em up like white nationalists did yeah, it's a neckbeard thing. Yeah, lately. I don't I don't understand it. It's not flattering. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> No, and it, and it pretty much advertises that you are going to do something bad at some point. Yeah, it's like it's like, like if, little, if, you're, if, you're around, here, if you're if you're driving around if you're driving around in a van, and I'm a moron. <laughs> no, if you're driving around in a van and you get out and you've got polyester pants and Velcro shoes on, like I'm going to question your 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 character. Mm -hmm. And it, that's like, it's kind of the same neck with beard, like okay. a neck beard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I get it. Yeah, I get so it. I heard that mentioned, yeah. and I, I wanted to chime in on that, but I wasn't up here yet. So <laughs> no, it's okay. You spot yeah. on. You spot on. The same way about that. <laughs> what you what you what you drinking on? Uh, I am drinking a slot water. Oh, oh. nice. The OG uh, of the sparkling. Uh, yeah. uh, My friend Bob Johnson. The, the seltzer. That yeah, it's the hard seltzer. It's like the the national drink of super white girls, but um, it's really handy when you don't want to get too loaded. You can just yeah. get a tiny bit loaded. You, yeah. you think right. that. You think yeah, that, but after about five or six of them, they really yeah. start to kick in. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, that's what that's what happens with PBRs. I was, I was like, you know, I'll drink these today. Next thing I know, I'm like 15 in. I'm like, this wasn't a good idea. <laughs> you're in jail again, you know. <laughs> horrible, I'm so sick of them. I can't drink them anymore. So it's a, like it's a good way for me to not get too wasted when I'm doing a podcast with a bunch of guys I don't know, except for Rodney. <laughs> hey, yeah. I know. Yeah, 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 well. about getting wasted. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's terrible that, things when I'm it's doing terrible that Rodney is the only one out of us that you I know, because he's like <laughs> the is. worst representation of all of us. <laughs> <laughs> he usually broadcasts from his shed. Yeah, this yeah. is one of the benefits yeah. of being really? like the wallflower back of the guy. <laughs> back of the room guy because I was the guy hanging out when 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 everybody was I don't know leaping forward forward towards them I had the common sense to be like I'm just gonna stand back here against the wall and and be the guy yeah. that's not the one they're singing about <laughs> <laughs> that's why you but no, we uh, we actually we we ran in a lot of we ran in similar circles we had a lot of overlapping friends i think i worked with bands that you know and actually i was saying yeah i, I thought I, I was remembering you working at wawa but i think i dj'd at wawa hut when your ex was bartending there yeah that was his place that was Kurt our place used to bartend there and and jenny bartended there jenny was she fire in the cycle slots she was there I was okay. All right, maybe that's what i'm saying yeah but yeah and i was across the right street and, the trash. but yeah that and no, I, was gonna say, yeah, and I, I was just going to yeah. mention that Alcatraz. I just saw that the other day. Alcatraz is closing up. That was no. Alcatraz I can remember seeing many, many shows there. No, the pyramids closing up. Alcatraz the pyramids is closing. closing. You're thinking of pyramid. I'm sorry. Alcatraz yeah, pyramid. Bar. Alcatraz yeah. was on St. Mark's and Avenue A, and yeah. when it opened, we were all like, "Oh my God, the neighborhood's going hell!" Like, there's a bar on the corner. Like, it was so pre gentrification, and we didn't even know. Like, we thought it was a big right. deal. That there was a bar there, but that now they're like, for "We have to shift. We have to close down the park and shift the arch over three inches because it doesn't line up with NYU." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's exactly. it's a. Uh, it's a little different now. Yeah, and I think there's a sushi place there now. So right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but Ginny, that, there, there was a lot of there was a lot of bars back then. Even like Lismar up. What was Lismar on Second? Yeah, Lismar was on Avenue. First Avenue between Second and Third, and that's where a lot of stuff. First, started. yeah, right around the corner. That place was really important. Right around the corner from the Hells Angels Clubhouse. Yeah. And a lot of bands kind of got their start with this. We did. Cycle Sluts wouldn't have existed right. if Wismar didn't exist. Awesome. So that so, was right. Well, that's yeah. I used to used to work with a bunch of bands that, you know, played down there in the basement. 
Yeah. I remember having to lug equipment dump. up and down disgusting. those basement stairs. Yeah, it was disgusting. It was a dump, <laughs> but but uh, the owner was a um, Chinese man who owned a bunch of uh, like dive shitty dive bars in the East Village, and he, I think we were the first people that made him money because we were all booking shows and doing stuff in there. <laughs> so he loved us, and he just let us have free reign. So. A lot of great shows happened in that terrible, leaky, awful, dirty room. I was going to say, I can remember seeing, yeah, some of the bands I remember seeing down there is just like, really? They played in the basement of a bar? <laughs> like, Jane's Addiction like played Carnivore. there? Carnivore. Like, I remember seeing. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry? And, and Jane's Addiction played, like, bands would come into town and then they would look for the cool place to hang out and it was the Lismar and then they would have so much fun that they would want to play like Jane's Addiction played there. Right. Well like Joe Walsh got up on stage one night. Yeah, Liz nice. Lismar was more of the the CD East Side and when and so I think like what was the oh crap. What was the downstairs bar off of what was it McDougal? I don't know. The, the trash no 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 no. I forget one one you had to go downstairs it was in another it was another one of those basement bars around the corner from bleaker bob's oh my gosh 20 35 oh, years ago bar? i can't remember scrap bar scrap yeah. bar was mcdougall yeah yeah scrap bar was another historical right. place where uh, where all of the rock stars when they came to town would end up in that bar hanging out yeah scrap bar was right awesome. like the so, old highway in honolulu you 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 mentioned the cycle slots before Boogie Buzzers started mansplaining everything about <laughs> rock and roll, and then <clears throat> and then uh, we tried to to jump in and tell us about the origins of the cycle slots. Like, um, well, we as mentioned, we started at the Lismar. It was a bar that uh, we were all bar tent like everybody was working in bars because it was just the easiest thing to do back then and and we had a friend who started this uh, you know who took over the lismar and we were all working there and he came up with a he wanted to do at the time a lot of like like biker rock and roll got big it was like you know mid to late 80s and it was right around the time that zodiac mind warp came out and gay bikers on acid and and so we were all kind of of this mindset where we were doing this sort of 70s meets 80s biker thing and so he came up with a night that he called cycle slut days and so we had to you know, put together some entertainment. So we did like an all-star thing and we were putting up flyers for it. It was just a group, <clears throat> effort. like it was everybody that worked there. It wasn't a band and people freaked out, you know, over the name Cycle Sluts. And, um, you know, that big was- Well, well wait, well, let me just pause you. And I don't want to be like, I'm not going to be the the mansplainer, but no, go ahead. Please. Fuck, they would freak the fuck out even more now. Yeah, well, we <laughs> just got Facebook just <laughs> made me change the name on the page because I, I I very loosely run the cycle slut page on right. Facebook. I you know I forget about it most of the time, but I got a note that I can't we can't call ourselves cycle sluts from hell on Facebook anymore. We have but so is it a trademark name? Yeah, it is, weird. but they don't. It doesn't matter. It's offensive now. So ah, I right, hate right. the CSFH. That's so. why I'm not on Facebook. What the Jesus. Yeah. People hate me being offensive. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Even though I may or may not have been purposely offensive. You know, uh, some of some of cancel culture is necessary, but a lot right, of it, I it, agree. A lot of it is just over the top. And the problem with Facebook is that it's all bots. It's not a real person. So you can't right. discuss it with anybody. They just pick out keywords, the bots yeah. or whatever they have, you know, yeah, yeah, the uh, pick out keywords the, and then the, and then you're whatever screwed. the algorithms are to filter. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, we, terrible, you know, people freaked out. And so then we were like, well, maybe we should try to do a band. So then, I mean, we were just fucking around. Like we were like, all right, let's do a band. So we did, uh, you know, we kind of put together this band with a few of us, with four of the girls and, and some guys. And it just, 
people just wanted it. Like it was, we didn't, we really didn't care. And then like our first gig was at the pyramid and it was packed. It was like packed to the gills. And then Joey Ramone was our friend and hung out with us and he loved us. So then our second gig was opening for the Ramones at the Ritz. So we, with, we with the Dickies okay. too, right? With the yeah. Dickies and the Ramones. Yeah. My, my wife was there as, as a young girl, right? Like 14 years old. Right. And yeah. she went to see the Ramones and the Dickies yeah. and, and and then these like women come out on stage and they're singing songs like "I wish you were a beer," "Got you by the balls," or and it like it was empowering to her, which is cool. Like, yeah, I mean, especially back <clears throat> then because I mean it wasn't that long ago, but it was eighties and and there wasn't there wasn't as much female empowerment. That's for sure. So no, it was it was like no, not back time. then. It was it was like you know. Like you had a lot of lot of lot of women that were in in the hardcore and metal scene, and and then their asshole boyfriends were like, "Here, hold my purse while I go to the pit." And like, yeah. no, that's not gonna happen. What? Yeah. Like the bleach blonde bitch songs, which did it for me when they played. My 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 yeah, my wife just said the bleach blonde bitch song. Yeah, it was called No Short Blondes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because we had this theory that whenever your boyfriend cheated on you, it was always with a short blonde. Like it never right. failed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's funny. I... <laughs> so, you know, but we everything that we were doing at that time was not, you know, we weren't thinking about empowerment. We were just goofing around and, and having fun. And it just, it kind of blew up regardless of our unprofessional behavior, you know. Yeah. So, that's and then, and then and then the next thing you know, you're like in Europe with the motorhead. Yeah. Well we <laughs> no and, and very few people can say that because we all like I mean, you know, some of us have brushed shoulders with Lemmy. Um you you actually so I mean to me he's God. But and I think uh, the most like metal yeah, people, oh, that's God. Right? Yeah, to anybody right. music he is, yeah. But you actually like spent time on on like in in the world, like out yeah, there I, with I, Lemmy. I spent a lot of time we spent a lot of time with him and he ended up becoming a friend of mine after that and you know yeah. we stayed in touch till he died. So um we uh there was a after those few shows there was a bidding war i mean everybody was getting signed back then like everybody like white zombie and circus of power and right and, um you know luna chicks and were a little bit after us but around that time like all there was this explosion in new york where everybody was getting a record deal so there was a bidding war for us and we went with sony it was and, like two years before seattle right yes, and then yeah which just it all everybody. For us. Right. And yeah. For all yeah. of the new fans, Seattle destroyed us. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> no. Yeah, Seattle kind of like I, everyone was like, "Oh, Nirvana." I'm like, "Fuck Nirvana." They ruined rock right. for me. So. Right. Um, but uh, we got signed to Sony, and then and then they, I can't remember how it happened, but somehow that tour was arranged. I think they bought us onto it, and Motorhead had to approve it. And then, you know, and then we were in Europe with Motorhead and it was fucking great. They were amazing. So, so yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. But the, the interesting thing was, or the story is that we, we were signed by this guy named Tony Martell, who was big at Sony at the time. He had the TJ Martell foundation and he, you know, signed Michael Jackson and he did a lot of really important things, but he was an older man. And so, uh, Tommy Matola took over while our record was being made and Tommy didn't want to have anything to do with what Tony had put together. So like Mariah we, Carey guy. Yeah. Her husband, her ex-husband. Okay. <laughs> so he didn't want to right. hear from the circle sluts. Right. So we, we didn't, the record was never properly released because they, they started to put it together and then they put us on tour we were in Europe and we got the album and it was a butt on the cover. Like it was this terrible, terrible, terrible album cover that arrived. And we were like, 
oh, okay, we have a pink album with a butt on the front. Like this is our, it was so spinal tap. And was then <laughs> we had- So, this- you know, so for collectors out there, what, I, what do you say that would be worth? <laughs> I don't have it, by the way. <laughs> well, you know, it just for some reason it just clicked in my head. I was like, "Well, that's got to be rare, right?" It's, it's actually pretty easy to get, I think, at this point. Oh, okay. I don't know that that many people want it, but there was a butt on the cover, and then we <clears throat> did this amazing tour. Like we started out pretty green and not knowing what we were doing, and then you know we went all through Europe with Motorhead and learned so much, and we were fucking awesome by the time we were done. And um, and then we got back to New York, and they were like, "Sorry, dude, you're dropped." So wow. that record was never properly even released. It was just made, and then they kind of sold it quietly. But they there was no there was nothing. So I had to uh, I had to get a job. Speaking of bars, I was like, "All right, my my rock and roll career has ended before it even began," and I had to get a a bar gig and I started working at Rodney you might remember this place uh the pit stop which was another fucking hole and um I was so many (laughs) I know it was on um it was on third avenue maybe or second avenue and 13th street um and the hell's angels used to come in and beat everybody up it was just terrible and uh, that's the worst part it's it's <laughs> nice when they come in and they're cool when they beat everybody up you're like fuck man there was one there was one guy that would just come in and he would just wreck everything and, right. uh, yeah. so, and then and then we get dropped i get this terrible job i'm super depressed and then bebus and butthead picked up our video which had only been yeah. aired twice on on MTV, like two times. Beavis and Butthead only did like a couple of pilot episodes because they didn't know they were gonna be that popular. And we were on the first episode. Yes, yeah. It aired over and over and over. Like it was on a loop on MTV and I was bartending in this shit bar watching people get the shit beat out of them. And then I was on the television behind me. People would be like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you're a rock star. You shouldn't be bartending. And I was like, that means nothing to me. I mean, it's great, but it, I don't right. any money off of Nobody it. pulled right. my bank account on rock star right. yet. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah ro- apparently, rock starring doesn't pay the mortgage no. or the rent. It doesn't pay nearly like, as doesn't. well as people no. think it does. <laughs> no. And, and it, you know what? And it's it's like, I have, rock, I have rock like, star- mine tim, a, tim and i both have like a tax like, have, bracket <laughs> tim and i both have like small scale like you know rock and roll success and we know that like Tim's in 97 it, bands and still doesn't make money if, if, if you wanted to like to have, make you if you wanted to make road. money doing that, tim's like scott money. ian <laughs> he's I on everybody's album Awesome. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Except Tim doesn't I don't know how. Like I don't, like, no, he, he doesn't have a good agent. I don't know how you would do this no, and, and 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 make a living uh, unless you just didn't didn't care about any other aspect of your life, right? Like, like yeah. going on the road is is hell. Yeah, it's like you know, everybody thinks it's a big party, but it's it's literally hell. Yeah, it's, no, I know oh, it, it is. I hated yeah. it. And the only people that I know that make money off of their music, unless they're like really big, are people that w- are willing to tour constantly. Right. And then if you're going to do that, that's fine. But you have to choose between, all right, I'm going to have like a family or a marriage or I'm going to be a rock and roll guy. Mm-hmm. And like, because you, the only way to make money is to be on the road all the time. Yeah. Constantly touring. That, that was the only way to do it. Well, there was one year we toured for, I think it was two, 259 <laughs> days in one year. And I was dead. We got home and like all I wanted yeah. to do was sleep. But then like a week went by and all I wanted to do was go out to the bar and drink. Like, yeah. Oh, I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then it's hard to readjust once you get back. You're so accustomed to being around too many people. And You're right. That. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Especially if you're like out with, you know, Lemmy and Wurzel. Like yeah. that's yeah. that's gotta be like you know, Wurzel wasn't Wurzel was pretty quiet, but Lemmy, you know, Lemmy outdid us all Le- for sure. Lemmy's Lemmy. He's yeah. uh, 
He was legendary. He was. Yeah, I mean, that's God. God. That's God. So, I, I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure that I've been served alcoholic beverages by you from like, I don't know, maybe Bowery Ballroom or somewhere, somewhere in that neighborhood in New York. Um, what are you up to now besides just you know? I Give us links to your blog, your to what I you're actually, doing. I haven't, I haven't written anything in a while, and I have to because I have all this stuff coming up all of a sudden. And like I'm, you know, all these people are asking me to write things for them, or do readings, or do podcasts, or whatever. And I haven't, re I haven't posted anything in that blog in months. But um, I run a music. It's kind of a music management company. Um, it's all, it's owned by a woman with, uh, some means and we handpick, you know, a very small, uh, group of artists that we believe in. And we, we don't, we're not technically managers, but we just help them in whatever way they need. So, cool. <clears throat> uh, good. yeah, it's great. It's been, I really, 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 really like it because, I'm around music. Um, all of the bad decisions that I made over the years, which are many, I can advise people again. Sorry to hear that for you. I've never. No, I mean, you yeah, know, Chuck. I'm just kidding. <laughs> We've all done that. Life, you know, but, um, I, I'm able to still be around musicians and around the business without having to worry about getting on stage and it's a lot less grief for me anyway. You know, I'm, I'm a lot more comfortable behind the scenes than I actually am in front. I can do it, I'm pretty good at it, but it doesn't, it's just too stressful for me at this point, you know? Yeah. So I love working behind the scenes and we're, I'm very lucky. Uh, the woman that owns the company is very generous and we're able to, right now we're trying to develop some people and we don't have the pressure of, you know, the bottom line as much as a lot of companies do. So it's been great. And it's been great for me during COVID because I could work from home. That works out well. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So that, and I did have a happy hour that I was doing before all of this, just one day a week, just because my friends wanted a place to get together. But I'm so happy not bartending. I don't, it's been, I've been bartending since I was a kid. So I, I, I wouldn't mind never going back, but Never doing that again. But right. never say never, because I always say I'm never going to do something, and then you know. Then you do it again. Then you well, never well, see half your friends. We're all on the same page. The <laughs> yeah. Can you yeah, can can you plug any of those bands you're helping out? Yes, we were we're working with Susu, which is uh, Liza Colby of the Liza Colby Sound, and her friend Kia Warren, who was in a band called Revel and Dimes. It's uh, two uh, rock and roll women of color with beautiful voices, and uh, they're doing kind of a rock and roll blues thing. They're oh, cool. uh, they, they just started, but they did an amazing mashup of uh, Stranglehold and uh, Nina Simone work song. So nice. it was. It's. I'll send it to you guys after this, but it was pretty powerful. Yeah. And we work with a band called The Sweet Things, which are more like a rock and roll, boogie, kind of stonesy thing. And uh, we are working, who else are we working with right now? We, um, what else are we doing? I'm blanking. We're working with on a project called Motivation. That's kind of this weird, uh, um, it's like a, almost a pyramid scheme with a band and it's got some big names. <laughs> One of the guys from I Hate God is playing on the record and um, uh, Norman Reedus, I think is doing something. And Sean, really? uh, oh, Sean from uh, the Toilet Boys, a couple of Toilet Boys people are doing it. Oh, so cool. yeah, we're pretty excited about those things. And we were working with the tip from Nashville, but they just broke up. So I'd kind of like to find somebody similar to them. Well, but, Inebra Nation uh, band. We have the Inebra Nation band. <laughs> no, we don't. We don't have any band. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the bass. <laughs> These guys be... think they're going to teach me in like three days how to play bass like fucking <laughs> at least the guy in Judas Priest. 
Bro, and we're going to have a base to your house this week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing you a base on Saturday. You can learn how to play. Yeah, so you yeah. just have to play one note. <laughs> yeah. bum, 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 they keep bum, forgetting bum, I'm bum, Polish bum, and I bum, drink bum, on bum, weekends. Bum. It's not going to work. <laughs> yeah, but you like rock and roll, man. You like rock and yes, roll. Yes, I do like rock and roll. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Now think about it. ACDC did it. And they love to drink. <laughs> <laughs> there have been many, many, many bands out there who have played drunk regularly. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tim, Tim yeah. is one of those guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of those guys too. But I've yeah. seen we, Tim, we, I've seen play we never get in a tour with Motorhead. So. <laughs> I tour with the Anti Nowhere League. They drank a lot. Yeah. That, that's uh, sort of similar. <laughs> no, it's a lot different. <laughs> yeah, this animal sounded Great like Lemmy. He, he would talk to us like this. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm. I, you know, especially now that Lemmy's gone, he's you know become even more of a legend to people. So I, I get it's a lot true. of people asking me like what it was like but at the time. Uh, you know, that was 1991. They people kind of don't remember that motorhead would go up and down in popularity and they weren't yeah. always as huge yeah. in the states especially True. as as people think of them now you know no well, they, yeah. they you know early, motorhead early was 90s. Demanded... go ahead boogie man explain no, it to me too to you asshole <laughs> no, early 90s. I mean, I remember somebody saying when we got that tour, they were like, well, don't worry, Motorhead's way bigger in Europe than they are in the States. Because no. <laughs> God, no. Yes. If, if we opened up stadiums to like 100,000 people and, and put Motorhead there, it'd be bad. Yeah. 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 But, but we don't do that here. Yeah. So. No. No. And they, I mean, they never, you know, didn't sell a show, but they weren't. Uh, they were much bigger in Europe when we toured with them than they were they, in the States. They were also perpetually under underrepresented and Oh, it's true. Never got the respect that they deserved. I, I, agree. Now, I agree. Now now it's now Almost it's like I'm happy that Yeah, now it's a different thing because Lemmy's gone and now Lemmy is gone. Right. You know, but at the time it was different because he was alive and younger, and and people just—I yeah. mean, there were obviously people that worshipped him. The his right, like me and Tim and Tom. Yeah. You know? Well, think but, about uh, the movie Airheads, where they had that whole thing, like um, who would win in a fight, Lemmy or God? Who actually, actually, first, actually I, I used you know? to write Kronos is God everywhere. Trick question. <laughs> Trick question Lemmy is God. I was a big Venom fan. <laughs> 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 that's good. That's good. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, his God thing didn't start till later, you know, till much later. Right. Like, right. You know, after oh, Airheads. Absolutely. Yeah. After, after Airheads. Airheads, probably. Yeah. 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 But I will say, you know, Europe was the tour that we did, they were very well received. Everything was sold out. And, and Lemmy personally, I think taught me more about being on stage than anybody, you know? Yeah. So. Well, I think that's cool. You could teach other people that. And Lemmy would always say too, like, don't call anybody a poser because we're all posers. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I think <laughs> he kind of, Look at himself that way too. Like I, yeah. I don't go outside looking like this. I like, call everybody like, a poser. Is, yeah, because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It's true. And I used to get really mad. I got really mad when, like, uh, when bands like Metallica started coming around and they'd say, "We're not posers. We don't." And I was like, "Dude, you're just posing it, not being a poser. Like it's all <laughs> right, rock, right." It's all, you know, <laughs> It's all a costume. I don't, that whole poser thing, which is actually why that, you know, that whole thing in, in our band, you know, the song, Wish You Were Beer, Hey There Poser, that was like us taking the piss out of that because it was yeah. stupid. Like everybody was getting called a poser. And me personally, I always dated the guys that looked like posers. Like I, if he had eyeliner on and some shitty fake leather jeans, I was all <laughs> over it, you know? Yeah. So, 
at Walmart. <laughs> so, you know, that was like, it just never made That's sense. That's why we were just right. friends. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it, yeah, it did. It, yeah, it, I was not that at guy. The end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, everybody's a fucking poser. Yeah, right? it's true. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, we all, That's, I mean, not to get too stupid deep, but we all wear a mask when we go outside. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, Yes, yeah. so I always thought that was pretty I'm the stupid. metal dude, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think Lemmy got that. I think because he had been through very, you know, he started in the 60s, he'd been through various bands and various scenes, he got that everything changed and it was just, you know, you just got up and did your thing in rock and roll. He was also able to, like, to say it and nobody was going to question Lemmy, right? Yeah. Like, who was? Yeah. What, whether you were in a glam rock I mean, band, you, you or, would be a poser if you questioned. Nobody questioned Paul Bailoff either. Well, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I did. I hung out with Paul Bailoff, and he he tried. He was like, "I'm going to jump under this window," and I was like, "Uh, I questioned that." I, did, yeah. I, I grabbed him by his shirt collar. I was like, "I." don't think you should. He's like, no, I'm gonna. I'm like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing you did then. Yeah. 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 yeah well, Lemmy was always, uh, he was always, the thing that I admired about him was that he was always sure of who he was and he was always sure of what he was saying. And he didn't, he didn't, uh, I mean, he listened to other opinions, but he didn't question himself. And I'm, you know, maybe because I'm female or just who I am, I'm always double, like I'm always doubting my own opinions about things. And um, he never did, you know, and I think yeah. he had the experience and the gravitas that it didn't matter what band you were in, you listened to him. Because sure. he was better than Lemmy, you know what I mean? He was there yeah. before you and he's going to be there after you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. No, for yep. sure. They get, they get, yeah. yeah. I, Even still, he's still there longer than everybody else. It's like, exactly. You see it yeah. most recently you know, with, like, you, you know, know, I'm sure you, you have all the rock guards, gods. You have, like, you know, David Lee Roth, fucking Elton John, whoever else, fucking Jimmy blah, blah, Page, blah. whatever. Yeah. But everybody gravitated towards Lemmy. Even yeah, those I, guys. Yeah. Cross yeah. yeah. You know, cross even genre, those guys cross gravitated cross towards love. Lemmy when he was where they were. Yeah, you know yeah, he, he has he has a cool present presence. Like I met him I, like fifteen to eighteen years ago, give or take, uh, in Hollywood, and like the he was just really really nice, and he has this presence that you're like fuck. Yeah, you're, like a strange. I mean, he's character. obviously Lemmy at that point. Like he's it's post two thousand. Like a hundred percent, I knew who the dude was. I tried to play it cool, you know what I mean? But like, yeah. dude's uh, dude legend you know what i mean yeah. like, and also very very nice like open to yeah very nice you know, a young dude just trying to say hi kind of deal and have have a, a a conversation i guarantee you he knew that i knew that he who he was you know what i mean but like yeah i was just like i'm gonna have a conversation and see how this goes yeah well he tried <laughs> like that because he had so many people like every time he was out or you know and i was around him he'd have these people just saying stupid shit to him because they wanted to talk to him so yeah. if you came up like that if you were young and you genuinely were trying to have a conversation he was pretty yeah good he was playing that. like the the video thing where they take their shirts off and stuff you the more you yeah. get right the, the more naked they get so i was like <laughs> oh right here do this that was my end right like oh if you do this their titty's gonna come out yeah, he loved those games. You know, he <laughs> died playing his game. Like they put a machine in his house, that pachinko oh, game. Oh no way! Yeah, really? Yep. Oh, wow. That's yeah, awesome. he he had one in his house. He when he was at the end, he was getting pretty sick. I think so. Yeah. That's that's uh, pretty rad. Sad. Yeah, he loved. Awesome. He would just sit for hours because he the kind of drugs that he did. You could just do that. You know, I there was a game we used. There was a place. Rodney, did you ever go to Frankie's? Uh, the after hours around the corner from the Lismar. Ron, you took his headphones off because he's like, I'm too cool <laughs> for this. I remember the name of these places. It was called, so there was this like, around. I, I, all I remember is. Around the corner from the Lismar, there was this little old Italian guy who had an after hours that was like, it was the size of someone's kitchen. And he had. <laughs> That's tiny great. Little, I love those places. Oh my God. It's amazing. <laughs> I, 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 the whole front was painted black. It was, it was a black Kiev. 
and you would it would all he would only open after the bars were closed and you had to knock and he would open the door and if he knew you he would let you in and um and it was you know it was only like oh my god i left there at like noon one o'clock sometimes like it was only if you were feeling really hardcore would you go to frankie's and buy his shitty coke and and so we would always take oh, lemon juice. Yes. <laughs> no, it's nobody, nobody really likes hard shitty for. coke. Tell <laughs> about this guy's shitty coke. Yeah. <laughs> so that joke? I, I hate coke, but was, I love the way it smells. That's it, right. It was like this tiny, tiny little closet, and there would be like maybe ten people in there maximum, and he would just, you know do the shitty coke and have his alcohol and there was a gambling machine what i would do just play the those. little yeah. machine for hours that's yeah, exactly what he would do he, he would do the shitty coke and drink, drink the alcohol to, and, and play the fucking gambling machine <laughs> yeah so i i just remember like just he was just focused on the game for a very long time yeah yeah but Frankie's was pretty legendary and nobody ever talks about it, I guess, because not that many people really went. But man, we spent like so many hours in that place. Nobody wanted to admit it, they're it's shitty. It's not there part so of, the, of the that cliche I got legend. Tagged into without even knowing what they were called. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm Rodney, I'm sure you ended up in there at some point. I'm sure you it's, did. Yeah. It's not part of the it's not part of the cliche legend that no, it's kind of like a yeah, hidden. It's like there's right, yeah, right. But, it's like I, I'm like I was saying, is that close to like you remember the restaurant Kiev? I think was on second. It was like a diner. It was I, I want to say it was. It, that place was fucking great. It was either on first or second avenue. No, it that's was like that a twenty four hour restaurant. Like, I remember bars yeah. would close. We'd go to Kiev and eat. Like yeah. at the time, early night, I was hanging out with Paris from the Cro-Mags. We'd be at like Spiral. And it's like, all right, let's go to Kiev and get something to eat. And it's like, all right, well, let's go here and have some more drinks. Like, hey, okay, I'm just along for the ride. I don't care. What is this? We're in someone's <laughs> kitchen or we're in someone's basement. I don't care. Yeah, like There's it was booze. I'm drinking. Oh, what is it? 9 a.m.? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll have another. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that was one of those kind of places. And that he used to, the reason that we knew about it was because when we first started working at running the Lismar, this little old guy came in and asked for ice. And he said, I have the bar around the corner and they always give me ice. So we're like, yeah, take whatever you want. <laughs> we went around the corner and we were like, holy shit, this has been here the whole time. This weird little, you know, and then we were in there constantly. He became our friend and, and he didn't close actually that long ago. Like maybe, uh, I think he died maybe seven, eight years ago. And that's when it closed. Like he ran it up until... He was gone. So this was a, a legitimate place. It wasn't Illegal like one of those. That time. You go through a secret door, then you wind up in the club downstairs. It was absolutely not legitimate in okay. any way. <laughs> <laughs> I think that he probably paid somebody That's off. The kind of places we like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm sure there was like it was a fire hazard. And, um, and it was, you know, you, like I said, you had to knock, it was all black and you had to knock on the door and he would open and say yes or no. And it was him oh, wow. he was, or his the other <laughs> woman that bartended for him. Like it would be like one of maybe three people that would open the door and they would say no or yes. That's great. So I went to I'm thinking about opening one of those places this summer. Yeah, it was oh, awesome. I mean, killer like weird fusions and like great beer. Put it in the woods behind your house. Yeah, no, that'll it's, no. Me. That'll that'll do well in Sussex County. It will. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> it, it costs you fifty dollars to get around the fence. <laughs> <laughs> See now with now with COVID, all bets are off. People can do it. At, like it's all new again, so you can sure. do yeah. whatever you want. Yeah, we're starting from scratch. Like <laughs> yeah, like, That's it. So ch sell chickens out of your car. <laughs> Nobody cares. Yeah, I'm not buying we're, chickens. We're, we're, we're back to grassroots. I'm, I'm just at home. I don't like, ever need like to go to a bar. We could go, hey, so what do you have coming up next week? What's new? And you're like, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. I don't yeah. even know what day it is. <laughs> yeah, I... Right. I'm very lucky. I I've had a very I've had a pretty easy time during this time, and it, it's it's been fun not to know what day it is sometimes. <laughs> yeah, and, and but I'm ready to go back and see some shows. Oh, I'm, for sure. I I'm dying. Yeah, 
Yeah. yeah. Lucky, We're all right. dying for that. I'm excited for next yeah. weekend. Yeah. yeah. I've seen see a, a show. See a show next weekend. Oh, you are? Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. It's Tim's playing. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing twice. See? Tim's playing, and, and we're, oh, we're also we're doing the show from there. From there, yeah. I, I saw. I've seen two shows. I saw. So one of the another band that we work with that I forgot to mention is Ten Ton Mojo, and Ten Ton Mojo did a live stream at Bowery Electric here in New York, and um, Bowery Electric's been pretty successful with these live streams, and um, so I, my partner and I went to see them, and it was just us in a room with the band and a bunch of camera equipment and sound equipment. But it was so nice to hear music pushed through, to air pushed through amplifiers, because I hadn't yeah. Oh, yeah. heard it in a year. And so I was, yeah. like, I was like, oh my God, I'm so happy. Why am I so happy right now? It's and I was like, oh, because my sound. ears are being blown out. You know, it was, it was really amazing. And there's and something then, you said about those super intimate concerts too, where it's just like maybe a handful of people, but yeah. it's like a legit show. Man, like I've I've seen a handful in some weird places, like the back room of a taco shop or whatever, where it's like ten people and and the band, uh, and it's it's so rad. You know yeah, I mean? that stuff is really special, and um, it's, it's way more rad for you than the band. Yeah, yeah. So, so, <laughs> look, dude, I saw like the band loves it, but yeah. like. Like, yeah, they're not. Oh, I mean, yeah, there's, there's ten there's, people there's in tacos. Yeah. No, I get There's maybe more money to be made. <laughs> you know, it's it's yeah. really hard to dredge up the energy to be on stage for that, but 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 right? you have to. You have yeah. to. That's and, that's your thing. And this is a time in history that we're not. You know, hopefully, we're not going to get back again. And it's right. been interesting to see like how the workaround is. And now I'm very excited to kind of get back into it. We went to a show last Saturday, again at Bowery Electric. They they're trying to do live shows, and everybody was at a table with plexi between us. You know, and that that's really, gotta be weird there because that place is not that big. No, it was really stifling. It's it was really weird. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it, there's no way that you're going to be able to keep people from because it was all people my age. It wasn't anybody super young, and everyone wanted to hug each other because they hadn't seen each other for so long. And yeah. we had this plexi yeah. between you, and it was it was a little weird. But I was thinking I need to I need to pay attention and I need to value this a little bit because this is probably not going to happen again. Hopefully, won't you know? Hopefully, at some point we'll get back to what we were. And these little shows that we're doing are. Uh, uh, or that we're seeing are probably not going to be seen in the same way again, you know? So I'm trying to pay attention and trying to really cherish it. And for me, seeing two shows in the last year was like a really big deal. Yeah. Whereas prior to this, I was like, Oh God, I got to go see so-and-so play tonight or have to, you know, like I'm, I'm no. try not to do that again where I'm like, Oh, I got to go out and see a band. It has to, I, I get to go out and see a band. Cause I, I have been to a show forever and I, I miss it so much. Yeah. So, and I'm not, I'm not a performer or an artist, but man, I love that. I love it. You know? Yeah. The energy and just, I, there was just something, the Tantown show was really interesting to me where I, it took me a second to realize what I was so excited about. And then I was like, Oh, cause it's loud and it's, and it's air blowing at me with music in it. You know, it was just the energy of that volume is, has always been to me and to you guys, too because you're rock and roll people that that's really uh energizing and for lack of a better word fulfilling you know yeah well i got pretty lucky last summer i lived behind a bar and they had live bands every friday and saturday all summer oh wow oh because it, was know, I mean, it was yeah, wasn't, wasn't always it wasn't always crap i liked but it was live music all summer yeah, like this pandemic's a hoax. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was nice. I, but New it was Jersey nice. I got I got to sit on my deck, drink beers, watch live music. That's great. So, if you can sit yeah. on your deck and see live music, I that's hate sitting on my deck. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Well, look, look at me. No, no. Happy uh, birthday, Chuck. Uh, it's that hash. He needs to smoke more hash. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, we uh, I'm gonna. I don't know about him, but I'm gonna. 
It's been a great show. We, this way. We, we, we've not only had no. we've here. not only had this idiot Boogie Buzzard on the show. Yeah, I, I know. And Mia Groby in the same room in the first time for I don't know how like, long, like two months. That's the, that's the three of us got up there and made a really bad yeah cocktails. yeah yeah. Nice. And uh, and we have uh, Raph, Queen <laughs> Vixen, Chuck from you're fucking beautiful man. Oh, he's from he's high as a kite, bro. From the yeah, I'm I'm high as a kite. Michael sluts from hell. <laughs> Michael sluts from hell. The, the name is uh, are the gummies on, on kicking in? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you should be you should be able to resolve the name thing though. Like, I, you know, I don't want to start. I just, that, you know, I you would. I, to, that's bullshit. I like, it really Facebook is. is so stupid that if you have a problem, there's no one you can talk to. So I was like, all right, fine. I just changed it to CFSFH, and I, you know, oh. I'm sure if I if well, I may- struggled, but I, yeah, it's not important enough to me. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Like it's not it's not worth dying on that. Yeah. So. If we were if we were an active band, then I would be more uptight about it. But I just keep that page up because people want it and it's a place to throw photos it's when I just up. so lame. That yeah. like because I like I'm I am a social justice warrior. Oh, the I, coolness I, like, is flowing that drums I, I really right. am. Music. But yeah. You know, there, there, there are like, let's be realistic and actually help people and do things that matter mm-hmm. and not just be idiots. And that, yeah, let's let's censor a group of women that fucking made a name for their band and, and right, that's, that's let, so stupid. Let, like, and whatever. Yeah. But I mean, I get what you're saying. Like, it's really. For you, it's not worth putting the effort to fight the because it because there's no live human that you can talk to. It's just right. It's just <clears throat> everything's automated. They don't have a customer mm-hmm. service department or anything. Yep. And Facebook is huge, so they just that's cherry what? pick words. And mm-hmm. um, that's all it is is words. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you isn't know, the whole point of like? Out. That's it. So, I haven't been on Facebook. At the end of the day, years. it wasn't like he's like, a child molester. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day, it wasn't like cycle sluts from hell, like more like at the cutting edge of woke in 1990, 91 than than you know, I like to think so, but a lot of things I catch yeah. myself because I come from a different generation and older generation. Right, right. I catch myself saying things that aren't politically correct anymore. Like I have, you know, all my gay friends, I call them fags. And I and I'm like, oh, I can't call them I can't call them a fag anymore. And my right, right. I had a friend here today and he's he's my age and gay. And he was like, right. don't tell me how to fag. He was like, I'm sick of these kids <laughs> telling Stop me how to fag. Your fag explaining to me. You know, right. so, it's that right. kind of thing Raph, where it's not your gay friends who get offended by you saying fag to them. People. It's people no. who don't even have a gay friend who get all up in arms about somebody using the word fag because that might not be politically correct. No, there it's yeah. their it's sister or cousin's gay, it. but it's also some of them. Grumpy can attest. We grew up right. saying, some, you know, some of that's right. Fag, but, like, you know, don't no, I, him. Don't buggy, be a fag buggy. about it. It's like <clears throat> Boogie, I agree, but I but I also yeah. think like some of of cancel culture is on is, Easter. I use the word fag more than I have in a year, <laughs> on Easter, only, no. only because my brother in law was there and he's gay, yeah. and I do that just to get the looks from him. And yeah. then he commented on my fucking rainbow bandana, and I called him a homophobe. No, so no. I flipped the whole thing on him. And, no, no. and my daughter and my nieces and everybody were cracking up. They thought it was funny. Yeah. No, but, but, yeah. but I mean, some, you have some, can, some cancel culture is is it's necessary. I necessary. Agree. I agree. Some of right? it's acceptable cancel and, culture. And then, and some then, of it needs and, to be canceled. Exactly, and then and then there is the extreme, <coughs> which is like fuck, man. Like I agree with you on some shit, but 
I, I can't get down with that. I'm yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's hard. And if it's a bot, like, say it's Facebook and it's just a bot. Right. Like, you're looking for people, right. then there's no, so that's yeah. the thing. If I had a person to argue it with, I would do that. But I, I was like, I, I can't, you know, I yeah. have video gaming to do right now. I can't <laughs> try to argue with Right, them. right. I have some, something <laughs> way more important to do than this. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got to go clip well, my nails. Yeah. I got to say this. We, we, we can't just sit here and talk and drink all night long. But can't. What I will say is I thank you for being on the show. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You. Welcome, hey, you're welcome anytime. Yeah. <laughs> you. you're, even when so other people are on, you're welcome to come on and... Can I just chime in if I see? Yes, you? Yeah, yeah. You can jump in the comments and be like, "Hey, throw you me in." You want to promote? Because just Chuck, the, send her a link okay. to every week. Okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah. I do one, have one of us has a trigger word. You go, "Oh, yeah, I want to be in." Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll send a couple of my bands next to time. Bring some of your please, fag yeah. friends oh, with you, and then they can get all up in arms. Yeah, I'll bring the fags. Rodney, Ten Ton Mojo was Scott Lano's band. Scott was in a band with Kurt, so you know Scott very well. So I should have, I should send him right. to you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, thanks yeah. guys. I, I saw his actually. I was working. No, thank like, you. When I, I I'm, think I I just got out of boot camp and you said this band's a huge Motorhead fan, but like you know, it it's tough. Back in the 80s for like 80s, 90s for machismo men to accept the fact that there are like women out there that are like badass. Yeah. Badass. Yeah, it was, it I love was it, difficult. Though. I love it. Yeah. Dude, 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 man, the Runaways did that shit in like 1977. I know, but we, nobody, <laughs> nobody, nobody was willing so to accept shit. it then. They got, yeah. Runaways got so much shit. Oh yeah, yeah they, they, they did. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, and nobody they had to and, a thing and, like Japan, right? Is that that's what happened? I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah. That's what happened, but they talk about like how mean Rush was to them when they were opening for them, like, and they were young; they were all teenagers. So, yeah. I, and 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 Tim and Tom and myself will say we hate Rush. Fuck Rush. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> fuck what God, Rush has to say. <laughs> but yeah, it was definitely different. And that was one of the, I will say that was one of the great things about Lemmy is that he never, he just saw women as people and he never had yeah. an issue with any of that. Lemmy had no issues with anything. That was his whole thing. He was all accepting of everything. He, I, he didn't have like a racist as bone long, in his as body. As long as it was rock and roll. Yeah. yeah. You, you were cool. Yeah, when, yeah. You, when you think about what his his idol was, Little Richard, a gay black man, mm -hmm. and he loved him. He was just like he is the best. Wait, Little Richard's gay? <laughs> no. L literally, at some point every day in the tunes I'm listening to, Little Richard comes on. Yeah, yeah. I love Little Richard. Yeah, right. I love Little Richard. Of course. I love That's you guys. I, uh, definitely, everybody loves Lemmy. Uh, I think Who like yeah, but the the power the powerful like all women bands like. While they, yeah, it's it's definitely a struggle, but I I think like for me specifically, like when I saw like the Luna Chicks in like the early '90s and stuff like that, like that was like wow, this is killer. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's a cool band full of rad chicks that's just killing it. You know, like it, yeah. it, I think it it helps probably get away from some of that misogyny and that yeah, that it does. yeah like, for oh, sure. it it, it like, adds oh, another voice bad. that you know you need these different voices or yes. So it's great for, for young women, right? Like I'm a hashtag girl dad, right? Yeah. It's great for young women to have people like that to like look towards. And then for, for, for young men growing up to see that and be like, wow, chicks are badass. You get that mutual respect. So that's awesome. Yeah. And you guys, you know, help pave that road. So good for you. I hope so. I hope so. That makes yeah. me happy that you think that. I, I hope so. You know, it, 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 it's, it's, uh, it's important to humanity in general that we, can look at even even if it's in humor and jest, like by the balls or or wish you were a beer, or whatever. It, it, if we can look at balls. that and and understand the 
the the humor in it. Is and this also, the Buddhist? Shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> you get what I'm saying. If we, if we, if, if 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 we can embrace all of those cultures of rock and roll, and 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 say, "Fuck, man, we're not, we're not misogynist. We're not. Um, it's not a misogynist world. It's." No. It's a world for rock and roll. And yeah. I've met so many men in my life that couldn't keep up with a woman who really knows how to rock and roll. And uh, yeah. for, for the record, all the bands I hate are men. <laughs> <laughs> Faith No More, No FX, <laughs> The Beatles. <laughs> well, let me like the Beatles. You better recheck. I don't care yeah. what I don't. I don't give a flying fuck if let me like the Beatles. <laughs> they suck and they're overrated. The Rolling Stones are where it's at. If you're gonna go to that, I love both of them. But you know. I, you know, I, I, I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. So I'm, I'm with Raph here. Are you off the hook now is that? Is it... <laughs> Cheer. I would say run away. I would say run. Run while you can, and then pipe wow. in when you want. <laughs> Listen, thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you. Cheer. It's thank great you. to talk to you and meet you. You know, my Zoom, and I hope you And I am gonna, I'm gonna pop back in. I'm gonna start listening to you guys, and I'll pop back in here and there. Nice. Yeah, yeah it, it, you're truly, you're truly has five alcohols. I'm we're I'm we're, telling you, we're usually, we're usually way we'll more ridiculous than that. She's not really supposed to be a guest. <laughs> just <Yeah>. show up. <laughs> right. like, a, like a sneak attack. <laughs> All right. Thank All right. You. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Right. Have a great right. night. So, uh, so I poured a beer. You did? Yeah, I did. I poured. I poured a beer. It's from the brewery. I need another drink. I, I poured two beers <laughs> from the brewer. Well, I poured another one, but it was the same one I had earlier. So this is a new beer. It's from the yeah. Br hey, brewery hey. West. What's that? Oh, okay. He's farting hey, or something. Did you guys hear that? Uh, that? I farted. I no, held that in the whole the time. Oh, I, I heard it was an alarm bell. Oh, look at this. I drank nice. one of these. Nice. From Rushing Duck in. Uh, Unfortunately, it, when I let uh, it out, my wife was just in New York. Just looked at me with disgust. <laughs> All right, this is ahead. really good. I'm going to take a ride on my next day off and buy these. Well, nice. Us, so yeah, well, so I got the Browery West. It's called Dog Ate My Homework, and it is a blackberry ale. Oh, it's an ale with malted barley, raw spelt. Uh, you young, Grubby. Fucking Howler Tow hops, black currants, and blackberries. And it comes in. It weighs in at a, uh, a commendable seven alcohols. Now, where is this from? Was uh, Browery West? It's me and Grubby are drunk. Yeah, where is are. it? And we're stoned. W, w e r i j West, as in like the di cardinal direction. Yeah, and uh, they should be out of San Diego, California. No, San Pedro. Excuse me. Whoa. San Pedro, California. Nine zero seven three one. So yeah, so because I just went home. Uh, I just went home to, to San Diego this last weekend and the first couple of days to, to deal with some family stuff and whatnot. And uh, so I went and snagged up some brewskis to have nice. with fam and I saved some for the show. Well, my wife brought me out during the broadcast uh, a Lambic. And this. You see that? Look at that color yeah. before, I, before I steal your show. Sorry. But just look at the color. Uh, it's got black currants and, and blackberries. And man, it is red. But it tastes good. Homosexual. You're because homosexual. of the green screen, you really can't see ah! it well, the green bottle. Yeah, the green screen kind of throws shit off. Well, this was given to me by Eddie from uh, Powerhouse Tattoos in Montclair on my birthday show. Last Shout month. out to Powerhouse Tattoos in Montclair. Yeah, great, great place. They did a... Uh, there you go. This right here. You can see that see wing it. right there. It's a flick. Yeah. It's a motorhead one. Let's see if I can get it in there. 
<laughs> oh, you got the okay. Yeah. And uh it's a, a peach lambic beer. It okay. Is fucking delicious, man. Oh my god. I feel like I've only had cranberry lambics I've had and then crakes. And Literally, that's all I've ever had is cranberry, cranberry lambics. lambics and then crakes. Yeah. Like the, I, the I had cherry. only had apple before this one. I love the apple, but this yes. one is like damn fucking good. I mean, hmm. yo, it's peach. Sweet. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> I like Shit. peach. I mean, I'll fuck with it. Like, like I. So there's stuff I'll fuck with, like pineapple, peach. Pecan pie and fucking um, like a turtle, right? Like pecans, yeah. caramel, and chocolate on some ice cream. I'll fuck that. Shit. All those things. I'll every t- you throw something at me, you're like, oh, it's turtle something or another. I'll fuck with it. If it's like chocolate, turtle. caramel, and, and pecan, yeah. or if it's peach, or if it's got pineapple, like I'll put pineapple on pizza. You guys can get mad. That's all day long, but I, I like pineapple on pizza. There's yeah, something great in, about the in, just in New Jersey. Thing. You're hanging from an oak tree, man. No, yeah, it's fine. That's fine. <laughs> but I'm just saying, there's something Tim. good about the. No, you, you don't do that here. No, Tim. The, you know what I mean? It's no. fine. You know, if you've got the palate of a fucking four year old, that's cool. You eat your chicken nuggies and your and your mac and cheese, and you do your do. I, no, that's cool. I don't judge. No, I don't judge. It, it, mac, no, no, you don't put pineapple on pizza in New no. Jersey, man. You can it's put pineapple illegal. on your mac and cheese. You can it's put whatever illegal. you want. On it's you not can put whatever acceptable. you want on pizza. That's right, because no. New Jersey's famous for it. It may pizza. taste gross, but you can put whatever no. you want on it. You know, you know what? In Chicago, they will. It doesn't will make it right. Ass, Chicago man. makes like some sort of half-ass no. frittata. Or tart, yeah, yeah. and they call yeah, it pizza. That's that, that no, I'm talking about pizza. the hot dogs, though. So in Chicago, if you say, if you order a hot dog and you're like, oh, can I get some ketchup? Like at most places, right? Like some of the big commercial spots, like if you go to Wrigley Field, you're going to have ketchup. Yeah. But like if you go to a regular street dog spot or a little whatever, and you ask for ketchup, they will beat your ass or send you out. Sure. Like, Fuck you. Yeah, sure, you there's places like that. There, well, there's hot like, dog stands in New Jersey that do the same thing. You, you ask for ketchup, get, your ass beat get out. You put ketchup on a hot dog. Yeah. I'll put whatever the Unless you're on under the age of 10, oh, you should oh, get man. hit if you put ketchup yeah, on a hot dog. No, I, I the only Jersey. thing you need to know about that is in Dirty Harry, where the guy asked Clint, Clint Eastwood, <laughs> doesn't the murders disgust you in this city, Harry? He said, no. The only thing that disgusts me is ketchup on a hot dog. Nobody puts ketchup on a hot dog. <laughs> and the fat guy's hey, eating. And Laura said, said I, that to Laura said I was mean to Boogie Buzzard. What? Laura said I was mean to Boogie Buzzard. Uh-uh. No, you no. weren't mean. He, no, it's the, I think it's the delay, dude. The hey, delay I want to tell Troho. That's what I told her. It's just a delay. Yes. Oh, Mother Earth Brewing Company. Yes. Vista, California. Um, when Stu and Dolly's open, they had this on tap. Nice. And it's it a cream ale. It killer. tastes like cream soda. This is fucking. No, the cream killer. soda one. Yeah, no, yes. it's, it's yeah. bitching. Yeah, this shit is fucking phenomenal. It's bitching. Fucking. Yeah, it's, really it's like that five point was... two. It fucking. It, it's fucking. You could drink this. They day make and night. other good beers, but that that yeah. was the one that I think launched them right because it was unique. Yeah, it, it is unique. I don't. I haven't yeah. tasted another beer that tastes. Like that. Yeah, look, the the owner look, of Stu and Dolly's. We went to a beer fest at the Meadowlands. Grubby, hold that behind you. The other side, Laura. Laura, <laughs> Laura didn't think this was living room art. I think it is. That's I feel like, like bedroom art, man. Z- you see, look, they the have Zeno dark and the dark they, Vader. They yeah, have dark like, walls. It matches. I will put yeah, it up. It blends in. Chuck. Chuck. My my yeah. wife. I showed your picture to my wife, <laughs> and my wife asked me one question. What has your have has your have you ever met your wife before you asked her if you could hang that up? Yeah, that's why I thought was like she was gonna think it was cool. But no, she. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, I, I would think Laura would say it's cool. Yeah, I would have thought so too. It's a xenomorph and Darth Vader, dude. And instead, when I brought that's it out of the car. I brought it out of the yes, car, and she she Unless looked at it, and she said, you can Leia. take that right back to where you got it from. Yeah, but <laughs> I'll take it off your hands. No, it's going to go right here. 
in um, the, in the podcast room. Well, I need I need some shit in my room. Bam, bam. Or I need to get a right green there. screen like Tim got. Because all right, like, so so we're almost done podcasting because we can't. Just drunk we, idiots. And sit we gotta here. do one more drunk news story. You're right. Well, so, then so you do it the because time. you have the green screen that says drunk news. Yeah. Asshole. So if we do drunk news, people are going to be like, what are these idiots talking about? Why the yeah, guy wait, that says Jimmy, drunk news Jimmy. behind him isn't talking. Yo, I am so but ready to do this one. This one's and great. Wait, wait, Tim, Tim, wait, 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 Tim, wait. I want to see if I can wait, do what? something for you. All right. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Hold work. on. You ready? Uh, yeah. Hold on, geez. Tim. You ready? Do it. Uh, oh, shit, I don't man. know if this Bear's is going to work. Ass. Man, I thought All he was right. going to disappear. You got to give me like three seconds. Go ahead, Tim. It didn't work. It didn't work. Oh, there it is. Oh, he's we got just the music. Had one of the chicks from Cycle so Sucks from Hell. Yeah. That's, That's pretty, pretty fun. Do, do, do. Truck gas yeah. seals front end loader drives her friend to hospital. An injured man needed to get to the hospital, so his drunk friend stole a front end loader, threw his friend in the bucket, and drove all the way to the hospital. It wasn't me. A man me. saved oh, his friend's shit. life and got arrested for it. The friend was injured and needed to get to the hospital. So the other guy stole a front end loader, threw his friend in the bucket, and drove all the way to the ER while drunk. He was later booked for a DUI and felony theft. I agree. He learned his lesson. Trevor. Never help your friends. I agree with Trevor or Stephen Trojanowski. It's not a no, fucking we'll call Trevor, Trevor now because Trevor. Trevor exactly. Trevor guy that was exactly. Tomatoes yeah. are fruit. No. Tomato is no, a no, 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 no. Shut the fuck up with that. It's science. It's Trojo science. means pineapple. <laughs> right. Uh, fucking mango. Pepper, peppers dumb are shit. Fruit too. No, we <laughs> understand, no. asshole. But you don't put pineapple. Pineapple on belongs pizza. on pizza. I'll eat it all day long. Shut up. All day long. Fuck you. Tim. You need to leave yeah. New Jersey immediately. I'm not in. Yeah. New yes. Listen. Tim. Go to Arizona Tim. and live with Mike. Chuck, Chuck, what topics do you Go eat? now. Hey, we're, hey, we're a world gastronomical Tim? city, Fucking bud. Mushrooms got and good food. Listen, hey, Listen. when was the last time you boiled up a pot of spaghetti and said, hey, you know what this needs? Pineapple. Spaghetti. Never. <laughs> uh, uh, wow. hey, Never. I actually hey. put... I put mango in sauce before. Yeah, I'm making this nice pot, nice pot of bolognese sauce. Let me chuck some fucking kiwis in it. Right. Try some mango in that it. Might not it's be amazing. Terrible, no, it would be terrible. I don't. I don't know that it would. <laughs> it would. It would. I don't know. Fuck you. No. Know. Yeah, try terrible. It. I don't know. Terrible oh, idea. They got Probably. some interesting stuff in Italy. Why? Apple belongs. On I Canada. still can't believe that that Chuck no. is younger than us. Yes. Yeah, Chuck, no, How is it that Chuck looks like he's 10 well, years it, older it, than you? Mikey's <laughs> younger than Chuck. His I'm, beard I'm, is a lot older yeah, than I'm, us. I'm well, baby. Mikey looks like he's 12 and has a yes. glue on beard. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what, though? <laughs> it's the pickling. Chuck, Chuck looks older than me, and I got six years on him. No. <laughs> no like, I would have never guessed Chuck under 50. <laughs> I would have guessed Chuck mid 50s. Easy. Boom. How fucked up Boom. is that when I go Hashtag out in public? Club. When it's I go out Chuck. in public? Chuck. Shut up. Bic. I'm talking. Big razor, up, Chuck. Chuck. Maybe you'll look your age if you shaved, you grumpy old man. Silence when you speak to me. <laughs> no, I am. When I go out in public with my wife, they look at me like I am a no. creepy old mother. <laughs> <laughs> like you little cradle robber, you. Because yeah, she looks, like, she still looks like she's in her twenties, and yeah. I'm like, uh, dude, your daughter is that your mom? daughter, sir? No, <laughs> <laughs> right. I got like, asked oh, that at work keep, when I'll my wife worked secret. there. Cafeteria, the, the cashier and said, "Oh, is this your daughter?" I went, "No, she's my wife." <laughs> oh, that's cold, bro. Damn. <laughs> Fucking like mediocre. eventually eventually my age will catch up with me and then I'll I'll deal with the same shit, but I I, I hope the pickling juice lasts as long as it can. Me, mediocre is killer. All it right. doesn't like me. So I pickled you, myself for a long time. I you, I have to go. Like I'm I'm tired of looking at you people. Yeah. Uh you've been watching a Nation and 
we're we're are we just Atlantic City, fucking English oh, Town, yeah. fucking Lenoka Harbor, and other points beyond in North next we week places. America. I don't know the dates. Next week, the week after, the following week. We will right. be in Belgium after we get picked up by a TV yes. station. Yes. You're goddamn right. We Your will. European yeah. tour that starts in September. TLC, Vice, Netflix, if you're listening. Yes. Come watch Chuck get wasted and lose himself yeah. while he drives away. We'll continue cigarettes. to give Chuck hash if that's what's we, necessary. Is, I, I got hash. The animal Chuck. rights thing that Tim is playing like 37 bands in. Next like, weekend, right? Why that's we like next weekend. Weekend. We're in New Bernation. We love you. And. We are getting the and, and we fuck love out. animals. That's why Tim is playing, and we're doing a show from there. And You Seems assholes like are else. still there. Yeah, I'm still We're here. Still here. Ah! I was gonna say you guys bounced. Yes. I I I just sent a text. Where's the after party? <laughs> I've got I've got Carnitas tacos with my name on them. Well, did, is Tim the only know, one we lost? Did Tim Groby and I? Groby and I are ready to go out and uh, have a cigarette and fuck you guys. Say, so. Hey. Can can we come back in like ten minutes and do another show? No, yeah. why? Without I'm a guest? Go no, no. no. But gentlemen, it was good. good Fabulous story. as always. Hey, Rodney, th thanks for hooking that up. That was an awesome interview, man. Yeah, yeah. she was good. That was killer. That was killer. I, w I wish there was a a little bit of pre-interview before the interview, so why? we kind of had some. Areas to talk about, but her right, talking hey, about Lemmy, on? Lemmy is always fun. Do you That's do true. you not know what show this is? Yeah, I do. That's the problem. Yeah, and, and if That's you why saw it's hard to get guests. Everybody was already drinking yeah. before time. Like, yeah, we were, we were drunk before we started the show. We don't do research. Yeah, but good job. I thought. Hi, right, Chuck. Fun. You're flat chested. You were in that band. Nice. <laughs> I don't know. This still says live. So oh, are we shit. live on YouTube yeah, live or just are. live backstage live? We're live. It everybody's live. Everybody, here everybody, everybody say oh, something shit. fucked up.
I've got Carnitas tacos with my name on them. Nice. So and, yeah, uh, I have a pizza without pineapple. <laughs> waiting with. I, I my I'm fruit not is I'm jalapeno not peppers. That's a fruit, right? Like because it has seeds. yes. No, that is an acceptable fruit on a pizza. Jalapeno I, peppers I, is an acceptable yes. fruit. Yes, I dig it. Yeah, not pineapple, not kiwi, not mango. I've never seen a a, a pizza with with kiwi. I have. Really? Yes. That's weird. All right. Well, guess I what? I felt like punching them immediately. Guess what? We're out. Fuck you. Yeah, we're done. We're Bye. Out. Bye.